you join us on a summer Saturday in 1955. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the passenger services that ran in the days before every family had a car. In those days, most people travel by train. First, we see K3 Mogul 61932 pulling into Kiverton Oaks Station on a Sheffield to Cleethorpe service. The K3s were originally designed for fast freight, but in practice, they worked mixed traffic for the majority of their lives. In our area, examples were stabled at Immingham, Lincoln and Hull. She's heading a four-coach service of ex-LMS stock, often known as Staniers. They were wood-framed with flush steel panels and ribbed roofs. Right behind the engine is the 57-foot porthole corridor first class, immediately followed by another first-class corridor coach. Next, we have a second-class corridor, and the last carriage on this consist is the second-class brake with parcel space. The Sheffield to Cleethorpe service was an inter-regional service, and on a Saturday, when extra services would be put on to cater for holiday traffic, it would not be unusual to see a higher proportion of first-class accommodation. Our layout is set in 1955, and that was the last year that Crimson Lake and Cream was the official livery of locomotive hauled corridor stock. Blood and Custard, as it was more often known, was scrapped in 1956, as was having three classes of travel, with third and second class tickets being merged into second class. On our way back from Cleethorpe's with a Sheffield bound service is the Thompson Design B1. Brought into service in the early 1950s, this 460 design was intended to replace the K3s and other older classes. By 1955, Darnell Shed had 19 of them and Immingham had 24, so they were very much the standard engine on the Sheffield to Cleethorpe service. The K3 on the up platform gets the signal and she's away taking another load of passengers for their day out at the seaside. It's the B1's turn to get the signal and she starts away steady for the tight curves out of Worksop. She's heading a rake of British Railways Mark 1 coaches, another introduction in the early 50s, so this set would have been quite new in 1955. The Mark 1 was intended to become the standard carriage for use across all lines, and it incorporated the best features from all that had come before. It was also constructed to be much stronger to provide better protection for passengers in the event of an accident. This consist has four coaches, more typically configured for an inter-regional service. We start with a composite coach, with the first class half of the carriage immediately behind the engine. The rear half of that coach is second class, and then there are two corridor coaches, all seats in these are second class. Finally, there's the brake composite coach, which had three second class compartments, four first class, and at the very rear of the train, the parcel storage area and guards compartment. With the guard and signalman giving it the right of way, the B1 starts away for Sheffield. In this shot, we see the very rare sights of passenger coaches setting back into the colliery sidings. Once a year or thereabouts, it was quite normal for the colliery management to organise a special train service to take the miners and their families to the seaside for the day. As with all non-scheduled special services, the older coaching stock and engines would be put into service to meet demand. And as the engine pulls away, we see the first coach is an old LMS suburban brake coach, all third class. It's followed by an even older Gresley designed 51 footer. This has some first class accommodation which would have been used by the attending management and their families. It's also the only coach in the rate that had a lavatory. These short haul suburban coaches were not interconnected by corridors, so the occupants of the other carriages would have to cross their legs until they got to Cleethorpe's. 
a rather dirty BR Mark I suburban non-corridor third class brings up the rear of the train. The engine is a Fowler 4F 060 tender engine. This brought the empty stock down from Doncaster, but we'll be leaving the train at Worksop. The Fowler uncouples and moves on to the goods yard for servicing, whilst an ancient D11 director backs down onto the train. Once the pride of the great Central Expresses, by 1955 these engines were reaching retirement and only pressed into service to satisfy demand. But she starts away with a spring in her step because she's off to the seaside with a trainload of happy miners. Class 101 diesel multiple unit waits for the signal at Shire Oaks Junction. This is the workshop bound Sherwood Forester service from Nottingham. A bit of modeler's license is needed to see this unit on the layout based in 1955, as these Metro Camel units were not introduced into general service until 1956. But as they were to be seen all over the country for the next 47 years, it seems an acceptable bending of historical fact. The type featured a steel chassis with an aluminium body to reduce weight. This meant a top speed of 70 miles an hour could be achieved from a single 11.3 litre six cylinder diesel engine. Although on the three and four car versions, there would be two power cars. Once arrived into workshop station, the driver would change ends. The platform was signaled for bi-directional working, so the train could depart in the down direction from the up platform. As the left-hand signal goes to green, the driver knows that the junction is set for the left-hand route, which will take him back to Nottingham via Mansfield. Thundering towards Worksop is another special weekend excursion train, and as such is just passing through our region. Hauled by a Britannia class Pacific, this rake of five coaches features three luxury Pullman cars, the centre of which is a restaurant and kitchen car from where Pullman stewards would serve sumptuous food to both first and second class passengers in all three parlour cars, with passengers sitting comfortably to a table. The maroon coach immediately behind the engine is a new Mark I composite corridor with compartments for both first and second class passengers. The final car in the rake is a full brake coach with plenty of luggage space. Making a steady approach to Kiviton Oaks is Hughes Crab number 42765. This mixed traffic loco is another that's been relegated to secondary duties after being replaced by more modern locomotives. She's hauling a Sheffield to Retford stopping service with a brace of Mark 1 suburban coaches. Behind the engine is a composite with a mix of second and first class accommodation and at the rear of the train is a four-wheeled covered carriage truck used for moving parcel traffic. A daily parcel service was part of British Railway's legal obligation to be a common carrier, 
and they had had a monopoly on carrying freight until the end of the Second World War. But once the war was over, there was a glut of ex-army lorries and demobbed soldiers to drive them, many of whom set up in competition with the railways. That was the beginning of the end for Britain's nationalised railways. As the train pulls into workshop, there's a team of porters waiting to sort out the parcels and the Royal Mail van ready and waiting to take anything marked as urgent. These days, where everyone has access to a private car, it's hard to imagine the time when even football fans travel to the Saturday fixture by train. Here we see a rather neglected looking Ivert 4MT hauling a five coach football special made up of suburban stock. You might notice that there's a brake coach at each end of this train. This was common practice on longer trains where there was no way to reverse or shunt the stock, which was often the case at stations close to football grounds. League champions in the 1954-55 season were Chelsea, although it's anyone's guess where these fans were off to. It wasn't just the fans that travelled to sporting events by train. Here we see a J11060 hauling a short rake of horse boxes on their way to Doncaster Racecourse, tailed by a composite guards coach at the rear. The passenger compartments would be full of jockeys, owners, stable boys and grooms, all on their way out for a day out at the races. It was normal practice for livestock to be immediately behind the engine to make unloading quicker for the animals. As the train reaches Brancliffe, it branches left to take the South Yorkshire Joint branch line to Doncaster. 